In this video tutorial, we're going to do some conductance calculations, but before we open MoveFlow and go to the simulation part, it would be interesting to see what's the theoretical background behind the conductance calculation. So conductance tells you what volume of gas is going through an opening every second, and to actually calculate that, we have to understand that there is gas surrounding this opening, some of those gas molecules are going towards the uh, hole and some of them are moving away from it. All of these molecules have different speeds, so essentially to do a calculation we have to choose an infinitesimally small uh, solid angle and we have to integrate over this semi-hemisphere that, uh, that surrounds the opening, check what's the solid angle of each of the parts from where the molecules can come from, take the part that goes towards the hole, so where the direction is correct. And since we'd like to calculate uh, typically how much gas is going through this hole every second, we have to also integrate to the speed distribution of the gas molecules, which is a maxwell mosson speed distribution. In order to do this calculation, there is a nice website. It used to be, uh, if you go to the opening, it's Nottingham University's website about molecular dynamics. So in the UHV part, there is a website called Kinetic Theory, Revision, Mean Free Path, and Impingement Rates. And here you can see the whole calculation. They actually perform this integral over all solid angles. And the result is here expressed in impingement rate, and in our case expressed in conductance, is that the conductance of any shape of opening is one-fourth time the surface of the uh, opening, times the average molecular speed. And the average molecular speed is an integration over the maximum Boltzmann speed distribution. It depends on the temperature of the gas and the mass of the gas. So if you know the temperature and the mass, then you can actually uh, calculate the conductance of a hole and just some practical units. So for room temperature air, uh, you take the area in square centimeters of your hole and then you multiply it by 11.77 liter per second per square centimeter and that's where you get the, the conductance. And uh, even if you're doing conductance tutorial now, it's important to mention that this unit is connected to the pumping speed, which is capital S in uh, working calculations. So you take all the gas that goes through the hole, you take the part of it which gets pumped or stick once it passes the uh, hole, and then you multiply the two and basically you get the pumping speed. So if you've got a 100 liter per second hole and you've got 50% sticking probability, also called capture factor, then you've got 50 liters per second pumping speed. Now, having an opening is the simplest case. Uh, what you usually want to calculate is the conductance of a geometric shape, let it be a pipe or any kind of geometry. And the reason that the two uh, are not the same is that when a gas enters the entry of a geometric shape, then after several collisions, it can either come out on the other side or go back to where it came from. So if you have uh, either an analytic calculation or a Monte Carlo simulation telling you what's the probability that the particle will not come back but instead go to the other side, um, then you multiply the conductance of the entry by the transmission probability, and then you get the conductance of your shape. Now, in case of simple shapes, for example, a round straight pipe, I go to Pfeiffer Vacuum's website, and they have some analytic formula for this. So here you can actually see the same uh, conductance and the practical formula with a slightly lower volume, depending on what molecular mass you take. And also, you can see that for round straight pipes, there's a formula where you take the diameter of the pipe, the length of the pipe, and then you can calculate, uh, actually for molecular flow, yeah, you can calculate the conductance. And at this point, it's important to emphasize that uh, mole in molecular flow regime, the conductance is a geometrical property, so it doesn't depend on the uh, pressure of your gas. It's always the same. It only depends on your gas type and gas temperature. And we will see that this is a good approximation, but it's not always true. In principle, it's only valid for quite long pipes. So let's launch small flow and let's make a really simple pipe. Um, 
At this point, I assume that you know how to use the geometry editor. You can also uh, watch that tutorial, but I will be only creating a few basic shapes. So I will make a circle first at 0, 0, 0, and the size of the circle will be 1 cm, so that will be the diameter of four pipes. And actually, I like a good resolution, so I will make it 100 sides. At this point, I have a circle and I will make a pipe out of it, so I will use the extrude command and so I will make the length of the pipe 10 cm. So at this point I've got a pipe of diameter 1 cm and length of 100 cm and basically to uh, launch the calculation I need to add a sticking factor to both ends of 1 which means that if a particle either hits the entry or the exit, then he will leave our system. Okay, and I'd like gas to come from one side only, so I will put a cosine this option. Uh, cosine means that it's a Lambert-Sheon distribution. I will give an outgassing of 1, and basically I can already launch my calculation. So here you can see the particles flying. Now, to calculate the transmission probability, um, I could actually uh, select the first asset, or sorry, I'm just clicking on it directly. I will make more flow a little bit larger. And you can see that basically I've got, I will stop the simulation so you can read the numbers, so we get 4.5 million uh, particles that have been created at this side. Out of them, okay, actually, cannot see this number, but I will just copy it and put it on the clipboard. So I've got about 4 million which came back to where it came from. However, I've got 913,000 that made it to the other side. Excuse me, I was looking at the wrong facet, so basically I've got half, uh, yeah, I've got about half a million that made it to the other side. So basically, if I would do a loose calculation, uh, I would just calculate what's the ratio of half a million divided by the total number of these sort of particles, which was about 4.5. Then I would get uh, more or less 11% transition probability. So before we do more calculations, let's automate this process. So I will just use the formula editor and I will write a formula. So the exit is facet number 103 and the entry is facet number 1. So I'd like to count all the molecules that get absorbed on the exit divided by all the molecules that were created. So I could write D1 which means all the molecules that were desorbed from the first facet or there's a special expression, it's called SUMDES which means all the molecules that have desorbed. By the way, there is a cheat sheet here. You can see what formulas we can have. I will just name this formula transmission probability. And we can see that we've got this 0.11%. And by the way, as our simulation is running, this uh, quantity is being recalculated. So let's check if this is in line with what uh, we have for the analytical formula. So if we go back to Pfeiffer vacuum, then you can see that we expect about four or three times uh, the diameter divided by the length. So let's calculate it, four per three times one centimeter diameter divided by the length. And we can see that actually uh, we get a slightly different uh, transition probability. Now, this is a good example that if our pipes are, are straight, then actually the analytic formula doesn't hold up very well. The reason for that is that the analytic formula takes into account the random walk of the molecules. However, it's always possible that the molecule is flying straight through the pipe at an angle without touching the walls. And in that case, it will distort the formula slightly. So uh, to check if we actually still make physics working correctly, I will just make this pipe longer. Right now it's 10 centimeter long, but I will just move it down by another 90 centimeters. All right, so now I will just 
rescale the scheme and we can see that currently it's 100 centimeters long. Let's launch the simulation again. Obviously the transmission probability will be different and now we can see that okay the Monte Carlo statistics there is some scattering but the volume will probably uh, converge to about 0.0135. So let's check if this is aligned with the analytical formula. Much better. So this shows that the analytic formula is quite good for long uh, round pipes. However, for other shapes, for example, a short pipe, the Monte Carlo simulation is better. Yeah, I let it run for a while and you can see that the volume is still kind of fluctuating. All right, so at this point, um, we have the transition probability. We could do a manual calculation to get the conductance. However, there is a tricky mode flow. So remember that uh, we have put a sticking factor of one in the entrance and the exit. And MOFL actually knows what gas we're working with. So in the global settings, I have set that we have a molecular mass of 28 corresponding to nitrogen or air. And the temperature is 293 Kelvin, so it's basically room temperature. And at this point, MOFL is estimating that the pumping speed will be 9.23 liters per second which is, by the way, uh, equals to our formula, which we have shown before. So we have this magic number at 11.77 liter per second per square centimeter. So you can verify it, 11.77 liter per square centimeter times uh, the radius of our pipe is uh, half centimeter. We multiply it by pi and we get about 9.2, which is more or less yeah, in line with what Moflo calculated. So basically, if we take this transmission probability and multiply it by the pumping speed, then we get the actual conductance for this pipe. I will just select this value, go back to my Google calculator, multiply by it, and then I get a conductance of about 0 0.122 liter per second. All right, at this point, uh, we've got the conductance of a straight uh, pipe, but obviously this is very easy to work with because like not much geometry uh, editing is needed. However, it's possible to do a really, let's say, difficult calculation with a real-life geometry. So this was the first part, and in the next part we will see a real-life example. So we will see an object with an RF liner inside, and we will calculate the conductance from the inside to the outside.